Can everybody hear me? Is there any Muslim in the room? Any Muslim in the room? I think I'm the only one. Thank you very much for joining me today, my Christian brothers. You are going to learn a lot today about Islam. Mm -hmm. You already have heard the teaching of this young man, Mr. Christian Prince. He's from Egypt, where is the Christian people is a minority, and they are leading a war and struggle for their liberation against the corrupt Muslim leader. I am in a different situation to him. I am living. Uh, my friend, I am not from Egypt. And don't speak about me without knowing me. Who told you I am from Egypt? And who told you I'm young? I wish. Young guy. Did this guy, he said I am young? I am ancient. Now, please take the mic. Don't talk about me. Tell us something good about Islam, my friend. I don't want to stop you, but you are talking about me. You have no right to say anything about me without at least being sure I am not from Egypt. I'm not in war with anyone. Trust me. I'm sitting right now behind my computer, drinking my coconut tea. Because someone, he told me, don't ever drink the camel urine, as the prophet said. Try to drink coconut tea. It's better for your throat. Your mind. Yeah, you, it's very simple. Just add coconut with tea. With tea. That's what coconut tea is. Go ahead, uh, uh, Mr. Sharp, whatever your name. Your mind. Thank you very much for your attention, and I'm glad you were listening to me. I'm glad you're sitting there filling your coconut with tea. That is fine. That is up to you. If you understand the life of the desert, you will understand Islam. The urine of the camel, the cream of the camel, the milk of the camel is extremely nourishing. It makes us stronger and helps us to survive. When the animal is lost, it is our death, our certain death. When you are faced with dehydration, the urine is a lifesaver. You need to learn that from the survival guide. When you talk about the Islam, you're Christian, you need to understand that the Quran is not the Bible. The Quran is beauty. The Quran speaks to the heart. The Quran is the language of angels. It is not the language of human being. So it does not need to be interpreted like language of human being. Like for example, when you see a beautiful building, you look at its dimensions. You don't ask the question like, uh, what do you think that uh, this building purpose is for? When you see a mosque, you don't necessarily say this is purpose just for prayer. When you see a mosque, you say this is beautiful building. When you see the moon on top of the mosque, it reminds you of the moon, the reflection of the sun and of the calendar. You don't need to say, why is there a moon on top of the mosque? Only somebody who asks this question is somebody who goes through the world with a very sad heart. But Islam is teaching us love, right, right. love and understanding, to see things with a heart, not to see things through the prism of uh, My friend, I apologize from you if I give you a thought. I want you to show me where the Quran teaches you love. And then we will go to the moon story. Is that fair, guys? Because as I see right now, you are giving us a speech which have no roots and no proof in Islam. Let us start with love. Show me where Islam says to teach you love. I will learn that. Do Islam order you to love the Christians and the Jews and the Hindus and the Buddhas? If you can show me that, you are my hero. The mic is yours. Otherwise, you are making false speeches. Go mic. Before you can understand what the Quran is saying, you need to understand the language of Quran. Oh, then you need to understand something about life. So if you don't speak Arabic, you guys, you will be ignorant. Okay, do you speak Arabic yourself? I do. Now stop playing the game. <laughs> oh, before you see, understand. So what we will do now with 1.4 billion Muslims do not speak Arabic? How you Muslims accept Islam without knowing Arabic then? You just said in order to understand the Islam and the Quran, you have to know the language of the Quran. I speak the language. Do you? Give me the reference where Allah he says to you, love the Christians, the Jews, your mind. We are listening. 
And I apologize again for adopting you. This is the only way we can communicate. This, this program is a stupid program. One person can speak only in the mic, what we can do. So show me the reference, sir. Otherwise, you are, you are just trying to fool us. I want to see where in the Quran it says, you Muslims can love Christians and Jews and non-Muslims. You're mine. Thank you, Christian, for the redirection. First of all, you need to see that at the time of the Quran, the believers was not only what you call Islamic believer. The believers were Christians and Jews living inside Medina. No, so when the Quran says, ladina amenu, it is saying, I am talking to you believers, all of you believers. It means the Jew, the Christian, and the Muslim. So in Islam, we have unity between all of them. My friend, I can get you busted in a second. Ayyuhalladina amanu mean the Muslims only. And I challenge you to show mm -hmm. me a proof that the word Ayyuhalladina amanu or those who believe mean all Christians and Jews. Isn't the Quran says the Qad Kafir Alladina Kalu? Those who they are Christians, they are kuffar. And those who they are Jews are kuffar. The Quran called the Jews and the Christian kuffar. So don't don't fool us. Those who believe in Islam is those who they are Muslims. As simple as that. Uh, uh, Mr. Clear, your name is Clear. Can't you make it clear? Can you show me the verse that says to the Christian and the Jews that you are a believer? I can show you where Muhammad, he promised the Christian and the Jews to go to heaven because at that time he was weak. He was trying to fool them to accept him. But when he noticed they would not accept him anyway, he said to them, you will go to hell, all of you are kuffar, all of you. Suddenly all of them, they came kuffar. The same three people he promised to go to heaven is the same people he promised them they will go to hell. Now, let us not to waste time. In the Quran, chapter five, verse number 51, it says, take not Christians and Jews as a friends. Explain to us, what does that mean in your mind? Clear, are you there? It's happy holiday. Uh, Mr. Clear, are you there? How Islam consider us believers, but the Quran says you cannot take non believers as a friend. And who are the non believers? The Christians and the Jews. Let us see who is here lying, either me or you. The mic is yours, sir. Go ahead. Christian princes showing how little that you know. If you Tell have understood the teaching of School Professor us. Frank Donna from the University of Chicago, he writes in his treatise and historical study of the ancient Islamic text, he realized that the Treaty of Medina is including Jews as the believers, including Christian as the believers, including oh, Muslim, Ansar, Muhajirun as the believers. Ansar, that course, is why. Believers. Islam, you can see, is inclusive religion. They... My friend, take it easy. You and your scholar, the one you are mentioning, his name from Chicago. I am an Arab guy, not from Chicago. And you just said, in order to understand Islam, you have to be from there and you have to understand the language. And now you are witnessing for me, it's a guy from Chicago. Now, chapter 5, verse number 51, it says, take not the Christians and Jews as a friends. If we are believers, why you cannot take us as a friends? The mic is yours. <laughs> I can take you as my friend if you are not a bad man. You are a bad well, you man. You cannot Mr. take Prince. me as a friend. And you like it. You are cool. You are not speaking from a religious point of uh, uh, an approval. You have to prove it to me. I have a Quran that says, take not Christians and Jews. Doesn't say bad Christians. In Quran chapter 9 verse 29 says, fight the people of the book, all of them, all of them.
with no exception, anyone is a Christian or a Jew, good fight or bad. them. Exactly. You're a prophet, he said in the hadith. If I am victorious, I'm going to expel all the Christians and all the Jews, not the bad ones, all of them. And he did. So stop lying to us. Give us the answer. Why you're a prophet, he want to kill the Christians and the Jews unless they pay him jizya. Not the bad one, all of them. You are mine. <coughs> the situation of war is different to this. A Muslim can kill anybody who killed his wife or children. Yes, that is true. If they are Christian, uh, uh, Abdul, Abdul, stop playing games. The verse is so clear. Your prophet said, fight those who don't believe in Allah, not those who they are fighting you. Fight those, those who, don't who don't believe, believe in Allah in exactly. the last days. And he's a prophet. So the reason to fight them it's is... Because they don't believe don't in believe. Allah. Your prophet said, I've been ordered to fight all the people until they say there's no God but Allah and no prophet but me. And they worship as we worship, and they slaughter as we slaughter, and they kill as we kill, and they pray as we pray. And they pay the zakat, and they face the qibla, and then and only then, I will stop killing them. So, it's not about somebody is killing you. And your prophet is the one who said the three letters to three kings, saying, convert or else. So, stop playing around the bushes. You cannot do that in my present. All right? Even Muhammad, he gave a license for the Muslims to kill anyone. He is a Christian if you want, and he will not be killed. Unless he is paying jizya, and then I will give him some protection. Look what the hadith here says. If a Muslim kill a Christian, a Muslim will not be killed for killing a Christian. Where is the justice? Did he run? Did the potato run? <laughs> you see how they try to fool you? No, he has a scandal. If you don't speak the Arabic, they will say to you, exactly. you will not understand. You see, guys, what we are talking about, the Arabic language? In the last one hour, they were talking about, if you don't know the language, they can fool you, right? Now, none of you speak Arabic. So this guy, he will give you a speech. Islam is about unity, about love. The Prophet was good to everybody. The Prophet, he said, oh, who you believe? And he mean the Christian, he mean the Jews. Now, you do not know the Arabic. And he told you, you will not know Islam unless you know Arabic. And imagine he's saying that to me, and he know I'm an Arab. I mean, how crazy that is. It doesn't matter what you do. If you don't know Arabic, you do not know Islam. Okay, I am Arab. So now what he will do? I am an Arab, he is not. I speak Arabic, he is not, but yet he want to teach me about his religion. And then when we get him busted with the verses from the Quran and the action of his prophet teaching to kill the Christians, humiliate the Christians, he want to give us a speech. And you see, those are professionals in speeches, but not in debates. Their speeches is to fool you. Imagine how many times this guy, he said the same thing. Rhetoric. Islam rhetoric. is about unity, unity. Islam called the Christians and the Jews believers. Islam called the Christians and the Jews, they will go to hell. That's a lie, yeah. Not only that, Muhammad, he said in the judgment day, Allah will accept the Christians as ransom for so the sin fire. of the Muslims. Exactly. And he will send ransom every Muslim who deserves to go to hell. Exactly. And instead of him, he will send so the Christian. True, a Christian will take your sins and go to hell instead of you. You believe it? Yes, your ransom from the fire. Allah will tell the Muhammadan. In the judgment day, according to Muslims or mm -hmm. Islam, Allah will ransom a Muslim from fire because exactly. he was bad by a Christian of us. Exactly. This is the truth? Yes. Allah will take the sin of all the Muslims and place it on the Christians. And the funny, the Muslim, they say to you, that where is justice to that Jesus, he died for you. Is that justice? Is that justice that God, he put your sin on me? The Quran says that every soul have to pay for its sin. But then the Quran says that the Muslims will be ransomed. Any Abdul?
<coughs> Where did he go? And right away you will see how the coward he ran away because he knew he's a liar. <laughs> Otherwise he will stand here, he will he get me busted, he will show us reference, <laughs> and he will prove us to be wrong. <laughs> but he has no answers. Uh, Benny, listen Benny, I have no time for a stupid talk. Either you want to take the mic and say so something good for us, or take your tail between your legs and get out. This is the last warning. You want to debate us, put your hand up. You are welcome. If you are here to call us names, I will send you out. No, I, I am an Arab. Don't you know what Arab means? We don't believe in freedom of speech. <laughs> no, you cannot. You have to call me a prophet, Christian prince. I am the same as Muhammad. I am, a, I am his cousin. <laughs> it's a business. We're switching the family. <laughs> Anyway, uh, Evie, the mic is yours, my friend. Go ahead. How are you, peace thing? <laughs> Thank you, Christian Prince. Um, yes, I just wanted to mention that if uh, that's what Allah was saying in those verses, uh, 929, where he didn't really mean the Christians and the Jews, that why do why why was there 1,595 murdered? this past Ramadan and 174 attacks, suicide attacks against Christians, Jews, and Muslims. Why is that? Are they, does, did, are they not uh, obeying Allah? I'm confused about this. Maybe somebody can help clear this up for me. Mike Free. Hello, everybody. How are you guys? How's it going? Um, now, what was funny, that guy said that uh, the Quran is the language of angels. I thought that the Quran was speech of Allah, not the language of angels. So, can that guy, <laughs> can that guy, you know, <laughs> explain is it actually the language of angels or the language of Allah? Um, yeah, and I just wanted to say that the Quran is a beautiful and it teaches love, you know. <laughs> I mean, where did that guy get that? He didn't mention one single thing, one single word, friends, nothing. He just came here and he just gave a speech. Some guy in Michigan, some guy in Las Vegas, some guy said this, some guy said that. He, all he did is just, just get that. Um, the only love for, for Islam is that you have to hate the unbelievers. That's the pride the Muslims take. So you have to hate the unbelievers, and that's all it is. It's as simple as that. Um, it's mentioned in the Quran that Allah says that he has no uh, love for the believers, and that's what it is. Um, and that's what Islam is, and that's why Islam doesn't stand. Did you see this guy? Did you, did, did you guys notice that he spoke in Arabic? He used, he used Arabic, right, to fool you guys. And Christian Prince just caught him by, by the they language. He just the Arabic straight away. Quran. He used the Arabic they have no clue what to, try, to try and make, a, make his argument, right, thinking that none of you speak Arabic. I know some of you do. But then... He got, he got caught. He, he caught on the spot. And that's what happens with Muslims. Um, even when I have a debate with them, they use Arabic, you know? And you can get stuck. They'll say something, you don't know what it is, right? So they'll mention something. And when you don't know what it means, it can be a difficult problem. And that's why, like CP says that, um, for example, David Wood and loads of other people, when they don't speak Arabic, it makes a huge difference. You know, when you speak the language, you can understand the story in more detail. You can, you can go deeper than what the translation is telling you. What the translation is telling you is just a, it's just a mask. You have to get behind the mask and see who the person is, what the, what the book tells. So it was quite interesting. Um, and that's what Muslims do. They try and use the Arabic as an excuse to fool you. Um, and obviously, 
it didn't work here because CP does speak Arabic and he understands that. Um, I'm going to pause the mic, I'm not going to stay too long. Um, but yeah, what, 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 what caught me from that, what that guy said is that the Quran is the language of angels. Now, what, 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 what does that mean in Islam? How can the Quran be language of angels? Mic is free, thank you, sir. You know, the Quran says clearly that everyone is not a Muslim is an enemy of Allah. So the Muslim, when he go in chat rooms, they try to make you believe that Islam is religion, believe in peace and love. And, you know, it's not against you. It's not against anyone. If you kill my wife, what do you want me to do? Huh? If you kill my wife, what do you think I would do? So suddenly the criminal, he will pray that he is a victim. He is the one get killed. When all of us, we knew that Islam grow and spread by the sword. Muhammad, he said, I was victorious from a distance of a month by terror, which means cities, they surrender to Muhammad, even though he is a month away because he's a terrorist. He said, by terror, not by love. Uh, now, uh, Benny, I gave you a warning, but look like you are a troll. And you are here just to, you know, seek some attention, aren't you? Are you a lonely guy seeking some attention? Go on, go to the gay section. They will give you all the attention you want. Do we have any Muslim here? Any brave Muslim? Qurbani is, uh, an, an, it, it's a word used in, in, uh, in, in Urdu, right? But it's coming from the word Qurban in Arabic. If you remember the story of uh, uh, Abraham, when he was ordered to give him, you know, his son. So the Quran speak about the Qurban, the word Qurban, which is not an Arabic word too. All right, uh, and this additional proof that Muhammad is a thief. So the word Qurban is mentioned many times in the Quran. As an example, uh, if we go uh, starting from Adam, Adam himself, according to Islam, he gave Qurban, uh, but not him exactly, it is his two sons. So if you go to the Quran, I believe it's chapter five, verse, 26 or 27, maybe 27. Uh, <clears throat> you will see the Quran speak about uh, telling the story of the two children of Adam who they gave Quran. Anyone knows why they gave Quran? Why they gave Quran? Which is sacrifice. Cain and Abel to worship Yahweh. Clear, you will? You have an answer? Are you sure? Okay, take the mic. Why the children of Adam, they give Qurban, which is sacrifice? Your mic, go ahead. I don't know, I thought you want to give us interpretation. Anyway, the story is very simple. According to the Muslims, the two children of Adam, both of them, they want to have sex with their sister, Susu. Susu, for sure, is just a name I'm giving her, you know. Let us say there's, they have two sisters. One, her name is Fufu, and the other one, her name is Susu. So according to Muslims, Susu, she was very beautiful, and Fufu, she have a cross eyes. <laughs> so two of the sons of Adam, they are fighting over the beautiful one and they don't want to marry the cross eyes woman, sister. So Allah told Adam, give him an idea how to solve this problem. He said, tell your two sons to give me a qurban, a sacrifice. And whoever I accept his qurban is the one who can take Susu. <laughs>
Any Muslim have a problem with this? Yeah, but clear here, uh, this is this is not. We are not talking about the sex now. We are talking about how stupid the idea is. Because you Muslims, you Muslims, you say to the Christians, why somebody you want to give sacrifice when your your God Himself is the first one supposedly who created sacrifice idea. To the point, He is asking people to give sacrifice. What I don't. This is Quran. What do you mean? That's not Quran. Chapter 5, verse number 27. Hmm. <laughs> Guys, no, this is not Quran. His Quran. This is what? This is the Quran. <laughs> Chapter 5, verse number 27. Wow. Any Muslim? So Allah, he ordered Adam to tell his two sons to give sacrifice in order to have the beautiful woman, not the one who have a cross eyes. By the way, I like women with the cross eyes. <laughs> Any women here in the room, she have a cross eyes? Sorry. I might marry you immediately. No cross eye. <laughs> I mean, what kind of God? <laughs> he is solving a problem of a woman have a cross eyes by such a way. Who care? I mean, what the, isn't it Allah? He is the one who made the guy, the women with the cross eyes. So what? <clears throat> huh? <laughs> she is the creature of God. So why Allah will favor the one he liked to give him the women who have no cross eyes? <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Isn't it stupid for someone he called himself God to be involved in such a story? <laughs> and if a God, he love you, he give you a woman have no cross eyes? Yep. If your wife is ugly, well... What if I like women with the cross eyes? <laughs> I insist, I want the women with the cross eyes. Mm. I think she is very nice and very sexy. <clears throat> Any Muslim who don't like what we are saying? Clear, the mic is yours. Hello there, Christian Chris. Hello there, everybody in the room. Do we have any any Muslim? Any Muslim brother? You see, are. Come and see. Hello, brother. Hello, gay. Hey, Van Halen. How are you doing, my bro? I was a Muslim. Lord have mercy. You were a Muslim, meaning you changed your religion? That is good for you. I am happy for you. Because we need one more finish. Now we're going to go ahead and explain this question, which is the important question. Because to remember that Adam and Eve were created from one soul, and from their offspring, God make people of many colors, many race and language. If you check, Mr. Clear, take it easy, take it easy, hold your horses. This is not the topic. Are you going to make us a speech about how to make beans? The topic is why Allah is ordering the two sons of Adam to give sacrifice. We are not talking about colors. We are not talking about black and white. The topic is totally different. Why you order them to give sacrifice? This is the question. The mic is yours. <coughs> ah, but it is all related. Now I will explain to you. He made the children of Adam and Eve in different color and race oh, come on. to love one another, to know one another. It is in Quran. Go find it. Uh, no, I could not find. Can you show me where is that? Where it says in Quran that he made them in different colors. Go ahead. As I know, your prophet, he explained the colors by the following. That God, when he created Adam and Eve, he sent his angel and he collect for him sand from every country. Which is very, I mean, logical. All right. Now, don't, don't go in, in a circle. Give us the answer. 
why Allah he ordered the, the, the kids of Adam to give him ransom or a sacrifice. Why? Go mind. What verse he said that Allah he made us in many colors? What verse he said? What verse he said? 49.13. All right, read for us verse 49.13, Mr. Clear. Go ahead. Read it for us. No, then first admit that you are lying. It doesn't say anything about color there. It doesn't say the word color does not exist. So why you are lying for us? Now go back to the topic. So why he ordered them to give sacrifice? This is the topic. Your mind. I just told you. Uh -huh. Because they want to screw the pretty sister, not the cross eyed sister. What do you mean you don't know? I thought you are the one who's going to uh, explain to us. Uh, uh, guys, in chapter 35, verse number 28, it says, mm -hmm. and from the kind, and from the people and the animals and the goats, there's different kind of colors. <laughs> a stupid verse, though. Allah and the knowledgeable, they fear Allah. <laughs> this is a verse showing us how stupid the one who made the whole on. That is stupid. Because what the first no part had to do with the second part. Exactly. What the colors of the animals had to do with the people. Mm. What the animals have to do with the people? What the connection? Stupid. And what worshiping God have to do with the animals? The stupid verse. Hold on, I call. The, the, the animals are Muslims too? <laughs> the animals are Muslims too? No, I, 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 give me an answer. Are they Muslims? Yeah, he said yes. Clear. Is the animals are Muslims? He said yes. Go, my clear. Go ahead. <clears throat> Just to explain, if we are made in tribes and nations, all the tribes is related to a genetic lineage which is connected with the color. As you know, the nation of Burkina Faso, not like the nation of Egypt. The nation of Egypt, not like the nation of China. Okay, a question, a question. A guy, his parents and his family, all of them, they are white. His wife, they are, they are from a tribe. 
Arab tribe. And the wife, she is from a tribe which is all of them, they are white. And they have nobody in the family is black. The wife, she got a bread net with a black boy. What do you think happened according to Islam? Adultery. Let me make it clear for you more. The husband is white. His family are white. The tribe, all of them, they are white. The wife is white. The family is white. The whole tribe is white. How the wife, she get a black son? The mic is yours. You lost me, I'll explain again. <laughs> a guy, he is an Arab. His wife and him, this guy is no they match. are both yeah, he is so, white. Their family are white. So in the, Their in tribe the is white. Both of them. The wife, she got a bread net and she delivered a boy. He is a black. How do you think this has happened? Your mind. Allah knows best. <coughs> are they Muslims? Back to the original question. When you put together a white coat and a white coat, sometimes you get the black coat as the baby key. No, that's going to happen unless they have from previous generation black. There's no way a white and white they will bring a black. No way. Unless from their previous generations of those animals they have a black. I'm, I'm speaking about a white man from a white tribe and a white woman from a white tribe, her family are white, his family are white, they have no black. The wife, she gave son, birth to a son, he is black. What do you think the problem is? Go ahead. You should not involve yourself in this problem, Christian Prince. Because you are Christian, you don't understand the sex and the ways of the animal. You should realize that's an animal. Yes, all the human beings come from human white beings. That human being is named Ahmed. My friend, this is not the question. The question is imagine you are an Indian and your wife, she's an Indian, and your son, he was born with the blue eyes <laughs> and he is white and blonde. And none of your family is blonde or white or have a blue eyes. How do you explain that? You're my. <coughs> we explain it in simple way. All these people come from Africa. All these human beings come from Ethiopia. Uh, but you know, in my family, generation after generation, we never have uh, a child. He is a black. All of them are white. Centuries. So why we are not given my uh, my mother and my sister and my cousins and etc. None of them give a birth to a black guy. There's a guy, he came to Muhammad. He said to him, he is from a, from, from, uh, from a white tribe, a white Arab tribe, from Bani al-Musayyib, uh, uh, from the family of Musayyib, from Bani Fuzara. He came to the Prophet, he said, well, you know what, my wife, she gave birth to a black guy. And why the guy is surprised? Because nobody in her family and nobody in his family and nobody in his tribe is a black. The only black is there is their slaves. So do you know what Muhammad he said? He said to him, do you have a camel? He said, yeah. He said, do you camel have some of them? They are red and some of them they are like mixed. He said, yeah. He said, it's exactly the same. <laughs> 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 Obviously, the wife is a whore, yeah, sleeping with her slave, and she gave around. birth to a black slave. <laughs> you see, guys? Get it? If, if you inherit, you inherit some. You don't inherit everything. Which means, if a woman, let us say, her grand-grandfather was a black. 
the coming generation, they will not be black. Uh, they will some, be kind of yeah. soft in color between mm -hmm. white and black. Is that correct? Ch chocolate? They will yeah. be mixed. Yeah. Right? Like Obama, as an example. Yeah, yeah. Obama. Light, Obama is the black. It's not. You can look at any black person. Look at Obama. Obama is no way to be black. It's half white. Mom but is he white. is taken from the African father, some, and taken from his white mother. white mother, some. So he's in the middle. Now, how the son is totally black? The parents are totally white. The, the tribe is a white and the family are white and everybody is white. According to Muhammad, what happened is the same what happened to the camel. <laughs> now we go back to the same, the, to the old topic. And later maybe Carl, he can put his hand up and explain to us the verses about that the animals are Muslims because we like to hear yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of the intelligence of Islam. Bedside By the way, story. do you know guys that the Quran says that Allah, he gave the animals Quran too? Really? <laughs> and they keep their Quran? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and they did not, they, you know, like, they are even better than the, the Jews and the Christians mm -hmm. because they keep the book of Allah exactly as it is. <laughs> All right? Mm -hmm. If we go to, to, uh, to uh, chapter uh, 6, verse 38, it says, uh, every creature in this earth from a bird or the one who woke <laughs> is nations like you and they never deleted anything of the book so Allah he gave them a book <laughs> and he, they will be taken all to, in judgment day imagine Mrs. Ant <laughs> and Mr. Ant they will face Allah in the judgment day <laughs> Mrs. Mosquito and Mr. Mosquito they will bird. face Allah in the judgment day <laughs> and they are Muslims <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what the Quran is saying. Yep. Now we go back to the question here. Why mm. Allah told Adam's sons to give sacrifice? Go ahead, your mind. <coughs> well, yes, this is for the, the, the basis of Islam is the respect and the duty of the human being to honor the animals and the plants, because they are expression of Allah in the world. We have... Uh, you must have, you don't honor animals, you honor only white animals. <laughs> you honor only white animals. Your prophet, he said, kill anything is black. <laughs> Any animal is black, kill him. And he said the black dog, kill him because he's the devil. Mm -hmm. You're mine. <coughs> Allowed to kill the animal which is having the rabies, which killed the child. Uh, no, that's not a reason. Your prophet he said, Kill the black dog for he is the devil, not because he's sick. Specifically, the black dog for they ask him why. What distinguished the black dog from a yellow dog? Huh? Or a, or a white dog? He said, The black dog is the devil, you mind. kill the dog the black dog why the black dog why not the yellow dog what is the problem with the black dog your mind you can kill the dog which is infected with the rabies this makes the dog <laughs> because... they don't have rabies tests uh, uh, do you know how to read how to write it says there they ask him what distinguished this dog the black dog from the yellow and the white the black dog, dog is the devil. The black dog is the devil. <laughs> He's got he, he, say, he said he is the devil. <laughs> so what is the problem? His color. 
If you are black, mm -hmm. according to Muhammad, you are the devil. You're mine. Ah, okay. Now that makes sense. Ah, it may, that makes a lot of sense. Black, you know, if you are black and your eyes is red, they will kill you. <laughs> so you, you, you just admitted that you killed a, a person just because he's a... a of yeah, Not because he's bad. Just because he's black, we kill him. Because he's the devil. All right, we go back now to the story. The story of, uh, uh, by the way, your prophet Muhammad, last name is Dogs. <laughs> Just to let you know. <laughs> your prophet, last name is Dogs. Muhammad ibn Khusay ibn Kilab. This is the last name of your prophet. And he did marry a wife, her name, Zainab ibn Jahsh, the daughter of the donkey. <laughs> now we go back to the topic. Uh, why Allah he ordered the children of Adam to give sacrifice your mind? The reason that Allah wants from Abil and Habib came and said in your language. They are saying that uh, you know they came, he had the crop of wheat and corn, and he had from the crop he used. The people of the city are slaves. They need the money. They have evil in his heart. So Does anyone understand what he's talking about? No. Clear. The question is, clear. His name why is clear. Allah, he ordered Adam's sons to give sacrifice? Take the mic. Them to test them which one is true in this heart. True in what? Both of them they give sacrifice. Both of them they give sacrifice. Both. Allah accepted from one and re rejected the one. One of them he gave starter of a sheep, the other one he gave him Viji. Do you think Allah is a vegetarian <laughs> or he eat meat only? Why Allah refuse the veggie, <laughs> the vegetarian, you know, sacrifice, and he accept the sheep? <laughs> Do you know why? Go ahead. The blood. <laughs> It's going to be a blood question. sacrifice. All of the people are saying the vegetarian food is better. <laughs> but I will explain to you what happened. The man who keeps the agriculture and the crop, he went by the sun calendar, like Egyptian and Indian and what what. They are using sun solar calendar and living in big city because the food can be kept in a sack. Like in Egypt, where you come from, Christian Greece. In Egypt, you have <laughs> the wheat to keep in track, like Surah Jews. <laughs> they are keeping they, all of the, 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 the food supply in the sack because the people who keep the crop. Guys, just tell everybody we are going to have an auction. This guy is for sale. Not as a slave. But as a comedian, yeah. are you are you crazy or what? <laughs> I'm asking you why he ordered them to give sacrifice, and why he accepted the sheep. Allah, Allah took the sheep. Allah don't have a fridge. Allah don't need a fridge. Allah need to save the food. Allah took the sheep up to heaven. Why he accepted the sheep? He rejected the veggie, the the, the veggie uh, sacrifice. Your mind. So the people who look after the meat, 
is more generous because he calls the people, he calls the poor. He said, <laughs> Potato. The meat was given to Allah, not to the people. At that time, there was no people there. Are you stupid? Those are the sons of Adam. What people? Share with who? Stop drinking camel urine, Abdul. There's only Adam and he has two sons. And two daughters. And according to you Muslims, Eve, each time she delivered, she delivered a boy and a girl. Believe it? Hmm. Wow. Eve, she delivered two, two, two. Boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl, no, boy, girl. Uh, you know, boy and girl each time. Adam went into the ark. Yeah, cool, you are online, but you are not, uh, not with Allah right now. Allah is upset from you because you did not give sacrifice. So, uh, clear, I have no time for a kid's toe. Why Allah accepted the sheep, but he rejected the pigeon? Blood sacrifice. Why he accepted the blood sacrifice? Oh my. <coughs> you are answering your own question, which I'm glad to assure you that you have some kind of understanding. First of all, the, uh, the people who were living at the time of Cain and Abel, this is clear because it says. In the Quran, it says the people who shunned Cain for his action, who was the first man to kill, the first man to commit murder, was Cain. Now I understand why some women don't want to get married. I really, really understand. I believe you. You don't need to explain. I'm, I'm, that's it. I'm convinced now. I was like saying, why women don't want to get married? Why women don't get married? I mean, look at this guy. This guy will make any women. She don't even like men forever. Clear for the last time. You, and the funny, your name is it clear. I know. I mean, isn't it funny? Can you make the answer clear for us? Why your God Allah accepted the sheep and rejected the, vegeta the vegetarian sacrifice? The oh my. <coughs> the heart of the of the sheep owner is clean. That is why all the prophets keep, keep the sheep. They don't grow the crop. The sheep that grow with Unbelievable. Hey Carl, how are you? I think you can do better, Carl. Carl, why Allah accepted the sheep? He didn't accept the the, the Viji sacrifice. Do you know Carl? Carl, do you know? Why Allah accepted the sacrifice of a sheep? Okay. Allah, he told Adam to order his two sons who they are fighting over their sister to give sacrifice and the one who Allah accept his sacrifice, he can have the women who have no cross eyes. All right, so why Allah accepted the sacrifice of a sheep, not the sacrifice of the veggies. vegetables? Do you know? Why Allah accepted the one who sacrificed a sheep, which means a bloodshed? Anyone? Man, why didn't see anyone when I give this answer? Looks like those people, they will not give an answer ever. I didn't know what's wrong. Can we find a Muslim can give us an answer? I don't have a door. I wish. <clears throat> but you know, to, to have a dog, he was, uh, is going, you know, to be inside. If I have a dog, he would have to stay inside, outside the house, like not inside the house. 
Because dogs are like babies, you know? Like if you have a child. Any Muslim want to tell us why? <coughs> but yeah, but why, why, why anyway he accepting a sheep? And the guy, he did not do anything yet. What mean God's fearing? This is the beginning of mankind, and those guys together, they are living together, and there's nothing to send, nothing to do. What, what, what happened? He did not do anything yet. If you answer, you can talk. If you don't, I will, I will give you a dot forever. Oh my. <laughs> 